Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. I have with us Katherine Robertson from our Tech Services section, who will be your presenter today. And we'll be having a presentation on the TIMS system. It's going to actually be a live demonstration for you. Before we get things rolling, though, I have just a few housekeeping items. And then we'll move right into the webinar. Um, as you're looking at your screen, hopefully you see a chat pod on the bottom left-hand corner. If you do not, please look for the circle with the thought bubble in it and click on that in order to open up your chat pod. Also note that we are attempting to record the webinar, but um, if we're not, su not successful in that, of course you've gotten the um, benefit of doing it live. And um, if we are successful, though, we will definitely be sending a link out um, to everyone with a link to that recording. Uh, so we're glad you're here, though. And because you're here, you can ask questions, which folks watching a recording definitely can't. Um, so that chat pod I mentioned just a few minutes ago on the bottom left hand side of your screen, hopefully if you don't have it there, you were able to open it up by clicking on the thought bubble inside the circle that you'll see at the bottom left hand side of your screen. Please feel free to put questions in that chat pod during the actual presentation and I will read them off to Catherine. Um, you did enter in mute mode and at the end of the webinar we will unmute everybody for audio questions but we do keep you muted during the presentation in order to cut down on background noise. Um, so with that Catherine, are you ready? I am. Let's Great. do it. Okay. <laughs> I'll share my desktop. Sounds good. Um, thank you, Victoria. Let me get my audio oh, turned on too. Okay. Can everyone see? Um, sure and thank you. Certainly, type in questions as I as I go along. If there's something you'd like me to pause on and uh, spend more time on, then just um, type that in the chat pod, and Victoria will let me know. Uh, today, we're going to go over our Tim's uh, web application. <clears throat> um, it stands for Transportation Information Mapping System, and uh, you can think of it as our publishing portal uh, where we make all of our spatial data available to the public um, from different agencies with, within ODOT and um, other government agencies as well. So you'll first want to know how to get there. Of course, you can go to the URL and bookmark that. Um, or uh, there are links on our external ODOT page. If you scroll down under Maps and References. And you can also just type in Google or um, whatever your search engine is, just type in o.tims and that will get you there as well. Um, and today we're gonna step through each section of the page, um, but first let's go over a few things on, on the homepage. Uh, the links at the bottom right, um, our news link should stay updated with our upcoming uh, trainings and webinars. So you can click any of these links to register through the LTAP system. And our contact link uh, gives you this email address and um, everyone is welcome to contact us through this email address with recommendations or questions or if you have any technical issues. And the help link We'll open a PDF user guide. Um, it's a good resource. You can um, control F, search through the PDF for any terms. Um, pretty much everything we do today should be also included in the PDF guide. And <clears throat> on the top left of the title bar uh, is a link that will always get you back to our homepage. And then um, you, if you notice, I clicked earlier, the ODOT symbol in the top right will get you to the external ODOT page. And of course, we have our search by PID. Um, PID is our project ID numbers. Um, we'll come back to this in a minute. But first, we're going to start by diving right into the project search page. So this links to our um, LS database for all ODOT um, projects. LX retains records back to 2003, I think. And um, 
we pull everything into this table um, and then we can map it if it uh, has a valid work location and uh, includes committed funding. So you can see at the bottom, uh, it's, it's loaded in 59,000 records and that loaded pretty fast. And from here you can um, extend the number of records that you see on one page. We'll keep it at five today since it fits neatly on the screen. <clears throat> and you can click any of the fields to filter on the fields or to sort on the fields. Um, but the filter tools at the top are really the most useful. You can see that it's remembered um, the search criteria I used last time that I was at the page. If it's your first time visiting Tim's, it will start out blank like this. Um, we'll just repeat that. We'll pick District 6, and then you'll see that it's already it's auto filtered the county list down to just the counties included in District 6. And that's brought us down to 35 entries. And I'm guessing if I hit reset on this as well, yeah, that's, that looks better. <clears throat> Wondering why that is. Okay. That stopped beeping at us. Um, so when it was retaining my, my search criteria, even though it, it didn't have anything populated here in the calendar year, I hit reset when I, it didn't look like there were enough records. So that did reset everything in the page. <clears throat> so if we're looking at 1953 records for Franklin County, we can narrow that down even more, um, by looking at the current calendar year. And our final search filter is for the work category. Um, we could choose, let's see if there's any bridge repair work. So we have one record. But you'll notice that there are uh, quite a few bridge categories. So if I clear that out, um, we can also use our search box in the results table. of the generic search to find all of the bridge related projects. You can also use the search box to um, search for a route number, knowing that we always use this five digit format uh, and use leading zeros to make it five digits. So we could find all the projects in Franklin County associated with Route 70. So that's gotten us down to um, 11 entries and we're viewing the first five. And there's several things that we could do with these records from here. You can just click each one to select and then uh, whatever you have selected, you can export as Excel, KMZ, Shapefile, or GeoDatabase. Or you could click the view a map button and that would um, bring you to the create a map page, which we're gonna get to in a minute. Um, you could click on the View Details button to the far left of each individual record, and that will take you to the Project Information page, which also has the View and Map button, and uh, View and Ellis button, and this links you to our Ellis Proj system, uh, which is a public-facing portal for our for our main um, Ellis software, and it happens to be down right now. Um, but they tell us that it should be back up very soon. And if you scroll down, you can see all the information for this project. And really helpful links are um, the project plan URLs or the project proposal. So I happened to pick one that didn't have any documents loaded yet. But if we go back, let's see if it will retain my searches. Retained everything but my route number. Of course, I want my route number. Um, I believe I clicked on this first one, so let's try one more and see if we can get a project plan. There we go. So this is how it will look. Um, and just like the View and Ellis button links to another system, um, Ellis Proj, 
uh, when you click the project plans button, it links to a to another system um, that's managed by the Office of Contracts. So you can just select any. Most of them will open as a PDF. Here you go. Must have picked a large file. So that gives you a view of um, what you might see in your project plans, pretty detailed. Back in our search results, there's a few other things I want to touch on and then we'll um, click the view and map button. I want to explain a little bit about um, how we give geometry to these projects so that we can map them. Um, I noted earlier that uh, projects that come through to TIMS must have committed funding and a valid work location, as it states at the top. And um, the valid work location will mean, if, if we look at this last example, um, CTL begin and CTL end fields are log points, county township log points. <clears throat> and it, it puts zero here, um, which is a null value since there's a zero in both. So there's literally nothing for us to send to the map. So if we selected this and hit view in map, there would be no results. Um, and we can see the other examples here have both a, a start and an end. So if you have a start point and an end point, that will draw a line. So when we get over to view and map, you'll see that record as a line. And I'm going to click through and uh, look for a record that might draw as a point. Here we go. So when we have a zero as the end log, um, we, that's not valid as an end log. It is valid as a beginning log because you do start a zero and build up one, two, three. Um, so if you only have a begin log and no end log, that's going to come through as a point. So I can do a few examples. Um, these would both be points and these would both be lines. And now when I click view and map, you'll see that it um, populates these results layers and we have a project lines table and a project point table. And um, we're going to go through all of the features of the Create a Map page. So we'll start fresh. Um, there's just one more thing I wanted to show you, and that's to come back to the Search by PID box. So I'm going to type in one of the PIDs that we're, we're actually looking at right now and give you an example. Um, so let's note that in these three records that we're viewing now, um, I have this PID number repeated twice. And then the one in the middle, is um, only one. So let's see what happens when I type in a PID that we know has um, at least two records. It brought us back to this transportation information or the um, project search page with those two records. And now I'm going to take a chance with, you can see it's remembered my previous searches, uh, it saves that in your browser setting and see if one of these happens to be yeah, a single. If there's only one record for that PID, it's going to bring you um, directly to that project information page. So let's try this right here. There you go. So um, just to understand how that behavior is going to work if you see something different when you're searching. So let's go to the Create a Map page. And we'll spend the majority of our time here. Uh, last time I ran a little short on time, so I am going to briefly touch on these other um, pages in a minute. Um, but first, when we first open the Create a Map page, it defaults to this Layers tab. And then we can expand all of the groupings to see all the data that we make available through TIMS. And almost all of these layers are uh, also going to be available on our data download page. So we'll skip over to that for just a second. And our data download page, if you um, 
want to do your own analysis in Excel or take it from Excel into your own database, or if you uh, do GIS work, you can get the Shapefile or GeoDatabase. These are all prepackaged, so you can just click to select all of the um, layers that you want to download. And then when you click export, it will download zip files for each of those. And then our data glossary page will include um, some information like metadata for all these layers that we make available. So you can filter out the list. I just started typing and it filtered for me and see a list of um, all of the fields in that table. And just like the search results table on our project search page, you can change the number of records that you see on that page. You can export that out. It will give you a um, Excel file. And you can um, get some more information by hovering over the question mark icon to the far left. It will give you a, a very brief description of the layer, inventory of bridges in the state. And it will tell you when it was last updated. Many of our um, assets are on a daily update cycle. So every single day, if there are any changes to the source data, you'll see that in Tim's. And then if this middle link is activated, you can click that and it will open the homepage to the office within ODOT that owns and maintains that data. So for Bridges, that's the Office of Structural Engineering. And uh, let's see if we want to choose. One more. Traffic is another popular so you can get information and oh, make sure it goes to a new tab and find out who owns that data. OK, so now we can go back to the Create a Map page. wanted to make sure that I um, didn't leave out those, those resources. They can be very helpful, especially, especially the data glossary as you go through. If you have any questions about what data is in a particular field or um, where that data set comes from. So in our Layers tab, um, to turn them on, similar to selecting items in the data download page, you just click on it. Uh, so we'll do Bridges. And um, I clicked on it. And you'll notice that nothing drew. Bridges is a very large data set. So you need to zoom in before that will start to draw. And that's just to keep it um, fast. Uh, whereas under drain outlets, it will draw at the full state level. And as we turn on layers, we can switch to our legend tab. And you'll see that that updates to show the uh, a description of the symbology for all the layers that you have turned on. And you can minimize and expand the groupings. Boundaries will include um, geographic and political boundaries as reference. Environmental has a lot of useful layers, um, mowing restrictions, projects. Um, like we saw the with the results from our project search page, they are stored as two separate geometries. So there's all projects points and all projects lines, and then. The layers that you see um, below that are pointing to the same table, but they're filtered out to um, hopefully be more useful if you're only looking to view a subset. So next four fiscal years, um, you can see is coded in several colors. So I can switch to my legend tab and see that each color represents a certain year. And then let's off to keep it clean. And then um, another really useful useful filter are is the project or um, the current projects filter. So it takes the construction dates that were entered into Ellis and compares it to today's current date. And um, that will give you a view of all the projects that are currently in, in construction phase. Okay, 
our roadway information. Of course, we're ODOT, so this is the backbone of everything that we do. And the main layer um, that you'll want to start with is road inventory. I will start to zoom in now so you can see bridges and roads. It's a lot of bridges. <laughs> there you go. And again, our legend tab to show us what the symbols represent. And then um, all of these other layers are different ways of viewing that at the backbone of the road inventory. So um, traffic is popular. And I'll zoom in a little further so that it will draw labels. And you'll see it's it's giving my um, AADT average annual daily traffic counts. And then you'll see that my bridges are now labeling with their structure file number. And another useful one is um, pavement condition ratings, PCR. And you'll see that it's labeling with the condition rating. And, and we'll look a little bit more at those layers. For now, let's leave on traffic, because that's pretty. <laughs> and uh, our last two categories, strategic transportation system, more reference layers. And then under safety, we have um, crash data uh, for the previous three years. And if I zoom in, maybe around an intersection. Now, uh, some of you might be familiar with GCAT or our crash analysis tool. And you may have seen the link for that back on our homepage. Crash data search. Um, this this system, it's linked through TIMS, and it looks very similar to the Create a Map and the other tools that you see in TIMS, but it does require a login because it does contain sensitive information about um, crashes. So what we have here on the public-facing face, TIMS page is pared down. Um, there's really not a lot of detail, certainly no personally identifiable information, but you can um, see crashes for the previous three years, and you can see that we have them symbolized by severity. So if we wanted to get um, more information about each individual record, our first way to do that would just be selecting this Identify Features tool, the eye icon um, at the top of the Tools pane on the left. And when I click that, it activates. I click over this area. It'll draw a selection box. And then in my results layers, you'll see that um, every layer that I have turned on that intersected with where I clicked, it will bring up those layers. And now I can see for that record all of the attributes that we make available. Um, a couple of things you may have noticed that I'm I can move the panes and resize them or hide them. Hiding the results pane if I'm just using the identify tool can be useful. And um, another way that we link TIMS to other systems is through URLs, just like we saw for the project plans. Um, on some of our in some of our individual tables, there'll be a URL to a different system like this takes us to our traffic monitoring for that highlighted section of roadway, traffic count database. Again, this is um, operated and maintained uh, by another division or another group here within Tech Services in this case. But it's nice to know that we make those links readily available. And we'll do an identify on one of the crashes just to get a quick view of the type of information you can get there. Um, so you can see it's pretty pared down. You can get the, um, the date and the severity. Now I had skipped over the second tool. We looked at layers and how the dynamic legend works. And then the second tool has um, several ways to to zoom to areas in the database. 
So let's go through each of those quickly. Um, find address or intersection. It's going to default to our central office location here in Columbus, Ohio. But you can type in any um, address or intersection format. It will accept anything just as um, Google Maps or, or any mapping software would. So you can use the and sign for intersections. Um, another basic one was the very last option for find area, where you can choose a polygon, such as a county. We'll zoom you there. Or um, an MPO. I actually use this a lot just for looking up an MPO if someone gives me the acronym and, and I can't remember at the time what it stands for. So um, if someone mentions Bellomar, I know I can click that and it will take me there. And then we have the fine latitude longitude. If you have an XY coordinate, you can certainly type that in and go to that location. Um, but I find this tool most useful uh, for this click on map feature. So I've activated it and I have my crosshairs icon. Anywhere I click in the map now, it's going to report a lot long. And I can switch format between decimal degrees and degrees minutes seconds. And our find log point tool also has that feature. So let's zoom into a roadway. Um, let's say I want to know the log point for this crash. So I can activate my click on map. And basically, if you're just hovering over where the roadway would be, it's going to find that log point. So it's reported the county log, which, which we use for most measures, also the state log. And we'll also give you the coordinates there. Um, but if someone's given you a log point, it's also pretty easy to navigate. So like all of our other drop-down menus, you can just start typing to filter. And then it will give you a table to choose. Let's go back to Interstate 70. And now note that it will give you um, the valid county log points in that county um, as, a, as a guide. So I'll know what's valid. So I can type 17.4. And it will zoom me to that spot on the roadway. OK, um, let's keep going down the line and we'll briefly go over some of the or these options underneath the tools, the tools menu on the tools toolbar. We have Catherine, I'm going to interject real quick. OK, um, we haven't had any questions come in the chat pod yet, so you're doing a great job. Uh, but <laughs> I just want to remind them that they do have questions to please put them in the chat pod in the bottom left hand side of your screen. And if you can't see the chat pod, click on the round circle with the thought bubble in it and it should open your chat pod up for you. Thanks. Yes, please ask questions if there's um, if there's a data set that you would like me to focus on or just that you would like to see on the map. Um, just bring it up. I think I put everyone to sleep because no one ever asked questions. But um, okay, That's we not can do. True. They're not asleep. <laughs> I know they're not. So you're fine. Thanks. Um, so some simple measuring tools uh, can be useful. I actually go to Tim's a lot just to use this tool as well. I can zoom in on an area. Um, you can measure the area within, um, like around a ramp. Um, if you're trying to, you know, decide if that's uh, can be a possible pollinator area as a program that ODOT's doing. Okay, so it's it's activating. Click to click to start drawing. I clicked once, but it didn't. So you'll want to see that box, and now you'll know that you've started. And then just double click to to finish your drawing, and it will report your area. Similarly for a line. You just click once to start drawing, double click to end. And from this tool, um, you can also report uh, Eastings and Northings if you need state plane coordinates. So I can just click any point, and that's how that will look. Um, then we have a draw tool. If you needed to just make a quick note 
um, you could draw a shape or uh, I find the text graphic to be useful. So, type in your text, click draw to activate, and then just click on the map. Now this is pretty limited. It can be helpful for reference um, if you wanted to put your note on the map and then take a print screen or um, print it uh, with our uh, print tool that's up in the top right. Um, and I guess this is a good time to take a, a little detour and look at this menu. Um, the first globe symbol uh, lets you choose your base map. So it's going to default to streets or you can do the uh, aerial imagery and labels combo. There's this dark gray option. If you just want something plain, make the colors pop out. And USA Topo. So everything above this line, these are third party base maps. And below this line we have um, well, there's, there's the ODOT base map, which ODOT can maintain so that we can uh, have, you know, if we need to change a label or something, we can do that, but it looks very similar. And then we have our OSIP imagery, which is really useful. Ohio Statewide Imagery Program. I believe they fly the state on a two-year cycle and take aerial photographs. Um, so depending on the area, uh, in their flight schedule, you could have last year's or, or the most current, um, or you can just choose best available. It will load the best image um, for that area. So these are really useful, high quality um, aerial photographs used as reference. And now your base map will be saved in your browser settings. And of course the images are, are large. They'll take a, a while to load. So um, it's good to remember just to switch back to a basic base map before you leave the page. And then um, let's pan back into our little test note. Our print tool is pretty basic. You can choose some pretty some you can choose three different um, page sizes, and it will give you a basic layout, but nothing too fancy. And then the last link, uh, share with your friends. It generates a short URL that just makes it easy to copy and paste. So you can send that an email or an IM, and then they can open it in another browser. And this URL will retain the layers that you have turned on and the area in the map that you're zoomed to. But note that it didn't retain um, the note that I had put on. Okay, so that's our little um, right top corner menu bar. And I believe we left off on the draw tool. Um, so we'll move on to the bookmark tool. This is just like making a book bookmark in your browser. Um, Got a question for you. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Chris, he, Chris wants to know, are the imagery files downloadable? Um, they are not downloadable. We just have, we, um, we just feed them in through Tim, so we're, we're consuming them, I guess is the word that I'm looking for. But if you go through um, OSIP, if you just query OSIP, Ohio Statewide Imagery Program, um, they may be downloadable. They should at least be available, like you, you could request a CD um, or download a, a smaller section. So it is a publicly available data set, but um, it's so large that we don't have it available to download through Tim's. That's a good question, though. Um, yeah, so bookmarks, these will, you can see I've created a few, and as long as I don't reset my browser history, those will be retained here and it will just zoom to an area of interest inside of Tim's. And um, another link to um, a system outside of Tim's is to our path web system. And it may look like nothing happened when I clicked on that link, but it's activated the tool and you can tell by the crosshairs icon. And so I will just click on, um, click over a roadway. Our path web system does not work in Chrome right now. The new version does, but it has not been pushed to production yet. So you can just take that URL and paste it into Internet Explorer, or you may already be in Internet Explorer. 
And we'll just take a quick view at our path web system. And this does not want to load. There we go. Path web system is um, we have our, our fancy vans that drive the state roads and uh, monitor pavement condition and um, take take photographs of, so it didn't find my location. So let's make sure I clicked on a street on a, um, yeah, OK. You can tell I'm not an expert at PathWeb. But I do want you guys to see it quickly. So let's get a state road. There we go. Don't you love it when that happens? <laughs> so while you're doing that and loading okay. things up, I just wanted to let everyone know that if you do have an interest in the GCAT training, we do have a webinar coming up on GCAT next week, and I'll put the link to register for that in the chat pod um, before we get to the end of this webinar. Okay, here's what I wanted you to see. Um, so we have these cameras all around the van like a Google Street View, but it's ODOT Street View. And you can literally drive down the road. Um, you can use this to look for assets along the roadway, street signs, um, anything like that. So that's really useful to know about. OK, and then there's one more link in here to our map channel. And it's uh, the same. It looks like nothing has happened, but it has changed the icon. Now, the map channel is a third party website, and all it needs as input is a, is a coordinates. You can click anywhere. It doesn't have to be on a roadway. And it just combines multiple views all into one screen, so that can be helpful if you're if you're trying to um, gather as much information about a site before you go out into the field. So make sure I highlight that. And I see um, before we run out of time, we really want to get into this these filter tools. Um, so before I do that, just to make sure we have this last list where you can load in a layer if you have your own shapefile or KMZ and view that in Tim's. Um, it's pretty limited. It'll pull it in and you'll be able to view the attribute table, but there's no control over symbology. Um, and once you leave your Tim session, then that will not be retained, but it's, it's useful to know. Okay, so we have a couple of ways to, to query into our data and to populate this results table, which I had minimized earlier. And um, the first, We'll do the one in the middle. It's kind of the simplest concept, filter by geography. You'll see I can choose from all the layers that I have turned on. Note these results layers at the top. Every time that we do a search, it's going to generate a, um, a results layer. And we'll look at that in the Layers tab in just a second. Um, but let's say we want to see all of the traffic records for Allen County. Click Search. And it will populate our results table. 2,400 features found. That seem to be, there we go. So from here, um, you can do quite a bit with this results table. Zoom to the individual feature, zoom to all of the results. You can export all of these results um, in those same four formats, Excel, KMZ, Shapefile, GeoDatabase. You can search. The search box will work um, just the same as on the project search page. So knowing that our routes are always going to be five digits, you can use that to narrow that down. Uh, if you want to minimize the number of columns that you're seeing, the show hide columns will let you choose. And you can click on any field to sort on that field here. The question mark icon next to each field name gives you kind of a little pop-up to the data glossary. Um, and every time that that field name exists in a table, 
it will it will show in this little pop-up. So if it's a very common field, um, you may see quite a few entries here, but it will give you a good description. Okay, um, let's do the next filter tool. Filter by graphic. Okay, before we get into that, because we are starting to clock up our view, I said that we would go back over to the Layers tab and see our results layers. So you'll see each time um, I did a query and it's it's highlighted re, um, results are giving me a subset of a, of a layer, it's going to generate one of these results layers. And you can just remove those if they start to get in your way or just click them to turn them off. Okay, filter by graphic. I like to do, let's get in on an intersection and we can report all the crashes around an intersection. So I'm going to first draw a point, click draw to activate, and just click one spot on the map. Totally it clicked does seem to be a little slow, but then um, we want to expand that point into a, a larger shape and then report all the features that intersect with it. So I'm going to create a buffer. So if I do 500 meters, I really did freeze it. Let's try again. Point. Oh, okay. See, I didn't change my, my filters. I got to tell it an actual layer crash. I'm going to come right back to that in a minute. <laughs> let's reset our create a map page. OK, let's just turn our crashes on. And let's use our find location tool to zoom to a, an area. Reactivate our filter by graphic. Crash. Draw point. There we go. Type in your buffer distance and then click buffer. And now when I click search, the results table will populate with all of these crashes that you see highlighted in the map. Another way that we could draw this um, graphic to search is with just a line. And similar to what we saw with the draw tool, just double click to end. And again, we can do a buffer around that. And you'll get those records. And finally, you can draw a polygon if you have a very specific shape. So if you wanted to, there we go get both sides of an intersection. Okay. And then our final filter tool, filter by attributes. This is the most powerful tool. Um, if you're familiar with building queries, then this should be pretty intuitive. So I picked my layer. I'm going to add, say, add filter. And say I want to search these crashes by month um, is, and then it will populate um, the drop-down list. So let's do April. And you'll see that I got this note. It's returned um, t over 21,000 features, which is which is too many because that searched the entire state. What we can do though is add a filter and add uh, limit that by by a geography. So we'll have county. And if I'm not sure what the field is named, I can just start typing county. And now it will give me all of the crashes 
in April of 2015 in Franklin County. It still might be a lot. 2600. I could even add one more filter. I don't know what the limit of the filters is. As many as you want, I guess. And we could minimize it by severity. Now that may be crash type, but let's see. Severity. Because this data set is really pared down, I think it's just going to give us a severity code. Um, I'm not sure if five is good or bad, or no injury or, or a fatal, but let's choose that one just to show how it will narrow it down even more. And now we've done quite a few searches. You'll see it only found one um, in that month of 2015 in this county. There was only one severity five crash, but I still see all these other dots on my map. And that's just a reminder of every time we hit search, we are um, going to generate one of these results tables. Now, the one to the top left is going to be your most current. So if I turn all the others off, I'm only seeing the box for my most recent results. And if that's all I wanted to see on the map, then I could go turn off my main layer um, and only view that one crash. Okay, um, so let's hear some examples. I'll, I'll pull up some other queries and show you how to navigate some different tables. And while you guys decide what you want to type in the chat pod, I um, have time. So I'll show you an example of adding in your own layer and we'll do a um, geocode addresses. I always keep a basic file available right here. So there we go. I chose my file and now I click upload. And now it will attempt to autofill these columns. Um, so it found the address, but um, there is no address to. For city, it didn't find a field name city because it happens to be city name, so you just pick it. And then zip code. When I hit geocode, um, you'll see that it's brought in those addresses, and I have a record for each of my results table. And if you guys are familiar with ODOT, uh, you'll see that those are our district headquarter buildings throughout the state. One question that's come into the chat pod and I don't know if this would be for you or for next week's presenters, um, but when would the 2018 crash data be available? The 2018 crash data would be available right now, but they had some data cleanup. Um, that comes through our Office of Safety Management, I believe, or they're part of the program management. Um, so, so typically it would already be published here in TIMS, but they're they're undergoing some data cleanup. They had some issues with their database. Um, they pull in this crash data from all the different sources, all the different uh, local first response um, teams or, or police departments. So hopefully that will be very soon. Any more questions? Not so far. <laughs> I am putting a link to that GCAT webinar. Um, okay. an enrollment link in the chat pod for everybody. And, and I did want to mention, too, um, I know that with 2019, the crash data has um, changed in the background as far as what's being collected because they've had a, an update to the OH1. So, you know, once the 2018 data is available, I know that they'll be working diligently to change the databases um, in order to reflect the data that's being captured on the new form. So just a, a tidbit of information there for you in case you're interested. But please put questions in the chat pod or I could go through and start unmuting everybody. It's up to you guys. <laughs> Do it. Unmute them. Um, well, one thing that I didn't I'll hit on. It. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do it. So if you've got a party going on in the background, um, please go ahead and tone the party <laughs> down. Um, here, we, we've got questions just pouring in now. Oh. Um, this is, are you able to upload a list of lat-long data and reverse geocode? If so, how reliable are the results? Yes, if your coordinates... Um, if your coordinates are, are good, I believe it should. So what we use for our reverse geocode, and that's to give an address, you put in the coordinates and it spits out an address. So that is a third party service, um, but it should be pretty active. It's um, 
going to be Esri that you can see in our the logo at the bottom. That's that's the software that is behind all of our mapping capabilities. Um, we can look at that tool. So sim similar to how I did the addresses, you would just point to your um, Excel spreadsheet with your coordinates. I don't think that I have one set up, but that's that would be a good thing for me to have for future webinars. Um, pick your fields and say reverse geocode, and then your in your results table, um, it will give you the addresses. Okay, the next question we have the chat pod. Can you get all the accident um, accidents in 2017 on 480 in Cuyahoga County? Yeah. All right, so we're in our create a map page. And I believe it said 2017. Yep, so that's what they said. Turn that on, and I'm going to do my filter by attributes. And so first we'll do our county, Cuyahoga. Oh, yeah. And what's my qualifier? Is Cuyahoga. Um, and now did he want it limited by a by a severity or was that it crashes in 2017 in Cuyahoga County? Yeah, I'm going to unmute Dennis so he can just ask you. Dennis, you're unmuted if you want to go ahead and ask your question, respond to the additional inquiry. I will do a... Um... Okay, I guess he's not responding there. <laughs> I know, you put him on the hot seat. I will minimize it because um, you can see that it, it was beyond our 5,000 record max. Um, and again, that's another setting that we have on Tim's just to keep the application responding quickly and keep it usable. He answered all crashes on 480. Oh, 480. That's what it was. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm going to add a filter and see if I have something. If I can search here by a road or if I need to do the graphic. Okay, so I'm going to zoom to Cuyahoga County and find 480. And that's going to be, does it go this way? I'm going to, okay, I see. I'm going to draw my graphic from the county line up and over. I'm not, oh, that's all 480. So there is probably um, a way that I could just pick existing roads and then query off of that. But I do feel like I'm on the hot seat, so I'm just going to do this first thing I came to. All right, and now to make sure that I've got enough, I want to do um, more than that. Get a buffer and make sure I have my, oh, uh, I may have lost it. Oh, no. I've been stumped because you it's hard to draw when you can't see the road. I feel like the Jeopardy song should be playing. I don't even know if this is the right road. Hmm. I would even like to um with a better way to email that out later. We can always, um, once you've got it figured out, do an yeah. extra recording of that answer. And oh, that's a good idea. We'll send that out to everybody. Um, so Dennis, you're just going to have to wait on the answer, but we're going to get it for you. <laughs> we have another question that came into the chat pod. Is there an indicator of available project plans under project search? Or we have to click to open it to see if it is on digital paper. Yes, you do have to click to open. Um, we generate that URL um, based on their system on how they will file their plans into the um, digital paper system. 
um, but we don't have a way to know if they have loaded that in or not. Okay. Go ahead. Um, it's similar with our, if anyone's familiar with our collector program, we have um, bringing a lot of fields, a lot of our assets, like um, under drain outlet. And then if they collected photographs in the field, um, we will have a URL generated at the bottom of the table to view those pictures. And we generate that URL whether there is an attachment there or not so that it's, it's at least enabled, um, so if they add pictures later. But unfortunately, you just have to click to see. Okay, we've got about five minutes left, so if there are no other questions in the chat pod, I am going to go ahead and open the phone lines for audio questions. So again, if that party's going on, make sure you ask him to tone it down. I just start at the top, and I'm going to unmute each phone line, so when I get to the bottom, I'll let everyone know. Um, but... You know, you're free to try to start asking questions as I'm unmuting here. I've gotten through the B's at least. I'm down to the D's. <laughs> How many people did we have today, Victoria? Oh, we had a total of 34. Oh, good. So, and 31 of them are still with us. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah, that's pretty good. I know sometimes people have to leave for whatever reason partway through, so... But yeah, the, the TIM system is just an incredible tool. And the more folks learn how to use it, the, the better off they're going to be. Okay, I've got everybody unmuted. Anyone want to ask an audio question? Don't be shy. Wow. Well, you've must have answered all their questions. Sure, so, let's go with that. Yes. <laughs> if you do come up with a question, though, that um, you have in the future and you don't, um, you know, have it right now, but you want to ask it of Catherine or the Tim's team, what's your email address again, Catherine, that you guys take questions at? Um, sure. From the Tim site, the contact link will give you the email address. It's tims at dot.ohio.gov. And that will go to uh, a team of several folks that, that support the TIMS application, so someone will get back to you as soon as possible. Wonderful. And I put it in the chat pod, too. So thank you so much for your time today and doing this great webinar. I know that it was beneficial to everyone who was on the webinar, and we look forward to hosting you on future webinars. Thank you, Victoria. Thanks. Pleasure. All right. Bye-bye, everyone.